Welcome to the age of digital microbiology. WASP Lab is a barcode driven and conveyor connected specimen processing system utilizing robotic plate management and image recording to automate specimen workup in microbiology. The customized solution that you see here consists of two WASP systems, three incubators, a conveyor track, canisters, and four image analysis stations. Let's start with a day in the life of a plate in WASP Lab. First, the sample is loaded onto the WASP. Using smart scan technology, WASP reads the sample label and receives it into the LIS. WASP starts processing the sample based on the protocol. It mixes and decaps the container. Then it takes a precise sample aliquot. WASP plants and streaks the plate using classic streak patterns and then applies a label to the plate. The conveyor belt is where the digital microbiology highway begins. WASP Lab scans and receives the plate into the system and takes a crucial digital image at time zero. The time zero image is the pillar of true comparative image analysis. Lighting is optimized for the media type and a number of photos acquired using state-of-the-art telecentric camera optics. The plate enters the smart incubator. Depending on the protocol, plates are automatically inverted and placed in a unique position for fast access. Plates are maintained at a homogeneous temperature. The incubator design ensures thermal conductivity for faster colony growth. Plates are held until the protocol calls for a new image. After plates are read, the lab staff calls the plates for workup. WASP Lab retrieves the plate from the incubator, confirms the barcode, and sends the plate on the conveyor to the easy-to-remove canister for workup. Canisters are flexible and can be designated per bench type or by operator. At the processing station, the laboratory professional scans the plate. A digital plate image appears with the pre-selected colonies marked with assigned tasks. Workup tasks are performed under a micro hood. When completed, the laboratory professional marks them as finished in the system. The age of digital microbiology and converging technologies is here. It is an exciting time for microbiology laboratories around the world. Are you ready for it? My name's Norman Sharples, CEO of Copan Diagnostics. What you just saw may have looked a bit futuristic. Maybe it's the kind of lab that chemistry and hematology are very familiar with. But what I'd like to assure you is the future is now here for microbiology. What you're about to see are some of the early trailblazers who've already adopted automation in microbiology and are now about to pioneer digital microbiology. Okay, so let's get started. Let's see how this automation is surely needed in microbiology and how Copan is working to meet your needs. 
The trailblazers featured in this film come from the following institutions. Boston Medical Center. Cedar sinai Hospital. Dynacare Laboratories and Frodert Hospital. Hamilton Regional Laboratory Medicine Program. Mount Sinai Hospital. ECL Alverno Clinical Laboratories. L'Hôpital de l'Epont Jésus. SHL Growth. University of Kentucky, Albert B. Chandler Hospital. In our laboratory, we're, we're facing a mass exodus of a lot of our longtime med techs. There's a lot of pressure to bring on more testing, expand our menu, and you know, with resistance increasing uh, uh, every year, the workload just keeps going up and up. Here in our lab, I'm thinking in five years, half of these guys will be retired or retirable. So uh, I think it's automation is uh, one of the best and quicker solution. Um, to the um, looming crisis. I collaborate with local universities and ask them to forecast the labor population that will be coming out of their programs. Unfortunately, in the recent past, they've been cutting their programs and have not been investing in the specific scientific field in which we're involved. Presently, today, we enjoy the fact that the economy is a little bit tight and people can't retire. But sooner or later, they're going to retire. In our laboratory, we're faced with a, a problem that most labs have been facing. Uh, increased demand for services while well, we are having no increase in budget, or if anything, a reduction in our budgets. The question was, how do we actually deal with that? And for a number of years, we were struggling until finally technology basically told us we had a solution, which was clearly automation. And like our peers in the Department of Lab Medicine, in Core Labs, et cetera, we finally have the opportunity to become more efficient, which was something totally new in microbiology. So to us, it was a clear answer that we wanted to jump on board as soon as we could. So we were one of the first adopters to actually bring in automation because of our need in terms of the demand that we were facing here in our laboratory. Automation, total lab automation, gives us the ability to uh, redeploy our staff to meet this challenge as we move forward. Automation helps us to grow our business with fewer employees. As a result, we are able to meet our goal of primary care of the patient, and we are able to do this even though there is a shortage and an upcoming and near future shortage. I think there's a number of different steps that have happened that is really going to push automation forward. Uh, over the next several years. Number one, we've seen a great deal of standardization in the methods that we use to identify organisms, in the methods that we use to, and the devices that we use to collect specimens, and we've really been able to standardize a lot of our identification methods, namely through the development of Maldi Toff, but we've also, through development of liquid swab collection, standardized, uh, standardized specimen collection containers, been able to reduce the number of specimen containers, consolidate them into you know one or two th or three different platforms, and those platforms then allow us to automate the entire process. The other thing that's really happened is we've seen a lot of development of robotics and development of um, you know, new technologies in terms of how they can be applied to microbiology. The, the conversations I have with my colleagues and anyone that I'm showing through uh, the lab is, did you ever think for one moment that microbiology would ever be so automated? would ever be in a place where technology provided you the opportunity to walk away and do something else rather than sitting down and streaking a plate or you know, setting up a specimen. And the answer always is, you know, the mouth open, no, I did not. So it's, that was my first impression, my first uh, kind of real introduction to automation was, wow, like didn't realize these opportunities, these technologies were available. 
So why automation? Why did a company known for specimen preservation and microbiology enter the world of automation? The answer is simple. Because we are passionate about innovation. Copan is well known for its large-scale custom automation that enables us to produce and supply every day over half a million collection and preservation systems for clinical and biological samples. It's no surprise that the advent of automated uh, technology in the microbiology laboratory is upon us, and if prudently implemented, one can take advantage of this technology in a variety of ways. Certainly, specimen processing is a good area to start for many laboratories such as ours. That said, I think that choosing any platform, including an automated specimen processor, needs to be a consideration of best fit, what's good for your needs in the laboratory, rather than worrying about picking the best platform. When we make a decision, when we look at e instrumentation, and we make a decision on, where, uh, on what company's platform or what platform we want to go with, we really want to do the platform that fits best within our workflow and the platform that fits best from the perspective of our patients in our, in our laboratory. So we look at best in class. We look at everybody that's ma manufacturing in a given space, and we look at, okay, what are the benefits of each manufacturer? And then make a decision accordingly. I think the ability to talk to, for instruments to talk to one another is absolutely critical. WASP and WASP Lab was a collaborative project right from the beginning. We started back in 2007 when we bolted two SCARA robots, just like these, onto a standard laboratory workbench. Then we invited feedback and suggestions from microbiologists and bench techs about what tasks they wanted the robots to do and how to optimize performance. We took the first prototype on a 20,000 mile road show all across North America. And one year later, at ASM in Boston, Copan launched the WASP, the first automated specimen processor in its class. We had a number of considerations for our automated specimen processor in the laboratory, and a number of factors that we considered important in choosing which platform uh, we would buy. We needed specific kinds of capacity and consistency, we needed flexibility, scalability, durability, and connectivity. There are a number of factors that we considered when we looked at automation for planting and streaking. Namely, could we improve our reproducibility? Could we reduce our turnaround time? We were very concerned with the number of manual streaks that our lab, uh, that our technologists were having to set up, and the fact that technologists will become disinterested in their job and may not offer the same level of quality at the beginning of the shift as opposed to at the end of the shift. So by taking and automating that planting and streaking process, we can use our technologists and their skill set really where it's most beneficial, and that is for reading plates, for reading gram stains, where we really need those experienced set of eyes, and take the planting and streaking, do it in a more reproducible manner, do it in a more, um, do it in a more consistent manner, and do it in a manner that will require less uh, well, that will require less subculturing through automation. At the time that we, we uh, looked at our options, uh, front-end accessioning was the main first step in terms of bringing in automation. Uh, so it was clear to us that that's what we wanted to move, but we couldn't jump in right away. Uh, the first thing was to change our specimen collection computers so that they could be utilized in a robotic system that would allow for automated process, uh, specimen processing. 
So we switched over in terms of our yarn collection material as well as our swab collection material from the traditional mattress swab to the newer e-swab liquid transport media. The, the whole like, wow, you know, a kid in a candy store, you open up the door and it's like, wow. And then, you know, the next question is, well, how do you eat an elephant? And, and, the, and the answer is one piece at a time. You have to look at this, not have it overwhelm you, but just look at it in, in bits and pieces and baby steps and just do one thing at a time. So basically, for my mindset, the initial process of implementing this system was, okay, the beginning, the specimen, right? So right now, uh, we are now, I think, pretty much uh, rolled over with the liquid e-swab. Um, so that was the very first step. Uh, we're doing about 75 to 80 percent of our specimens on the WASP right now. Some of our limitations have not been due to the WASP, but due to our LIS system. And I think that um, it, this is um, something I hope the LIS systems are listening to, that they need to catch up with the tremendous improvements in automation and equipment in microbiology laboratories. I think perhaps it was a bit unexpected to them that they've been used to core uh, our you know, chemistry and hematology areas having such automation and the need for the computer interfaces and the LIS support. But I think it caught a few of the uh, computer um, vendors a little bit off guard in what we needed. Uh, and so a lot of our implementation was uh, working with our LIS system and the WASP to, to have them communicate and um, to work positively together. Look at your procedures and, and understand how you can best utilize information technology and interfacing with your hospital information systems and your lab information systems via the specimen processor. What we worked with is, well, how would we be able to maintain or maximize this? And we had fairly complex um, specimens coming in that had multiple different requests for different types of tests. Um, and so we realized that we really needed to, and we really kind of pushed the limits of what we could do in terms of uh, working both with our hospital information systems, lab information systems, and the specimen process to maintain that we wouldn't have to change how we did things in order to adapt to this new technology. Um, and certainly um, through a lot of hard work with our information technologists and with our lab information system specialists on our end and with our HIS, it's really working with the team approach and with, us, and with the company with regard to the specimen processor. We were able to maintain all that we were doing before and if anything, gain, gain the efficiencies through having the automated reading of, of um, our hospital information system labels and barcodes directly on the specimen processor being recognized into our lab information system. In this particular site at this hospital, Mount Sinai, when they create their orders on their HIS, the Cerner, they get their labels from our system sauce. So they have label printers all up on the floors, but the actual label is coming out of the LIS. So they're already labeled with the soft label. So when that specimen comes to us, because that number is recognized in our LIS, that does not have to be booked at all by a, a technician. That goes straight onto the WASP and WASP will recognize the label, will get the test, will know what media to do, and do everything. So they do not have to be handled, test created or anything like that. They go straight on. All we do is literally take the specimen out of the actual bag, put it into the WASP, and it receives the specimen. It determines the specimen type, determines the appropriate specimen uh, collection plates, uh, processing plates, and, and does everything for us. So the amount of savings from that is just um, is remarkable. The one thing that I would all, I would advise anyone wanting to implement a WASP system um, to work very, very closely uh, with their computer vendor, with the WASP people, and know up front what problems they might be getting into. You do not want to go into it blindly and thinking that everything is going to be perfect. Um, that's, that's where the real skill came into was our computer people talking to um, the COPAN people. It, it was a challenge. When we brought automation into the laboratory, it was a major challenge. We had a number of techs that readily embraced it, saying, this is going to make my job better. This is going to let me do the things that I'm most interested in doing, and it's going to let me be more efficient. To the other end, we did meet some resistance. There was concern about reproducibility of streaking. There was concern about you know, is this going to eliminate my job? Is this going to affect what I do on a daily basis? And we really tried to work with each of those individuals to start to say, this, we're not looking through automation 
to reduce headcount. We're looking to make ourselves more efficient. We're looking at what else can we bring in? What other you know, deliverables can we offer to the patients ultimately that we serve? And ultimately, can we improve the turnaround time for those patients that we serve? I could say one of the challenges of implementing um, automated specimen processing is, um, is that you need to be able to justify it and sell it to leadership as a plus without endangering your um, personnel and the morale of your personnel who are both excited by the prospect of acquiring automation and tools that can help them and provide better patient care. Um, but you have to do so in a way that convinces them that this enables redeployment of personnel to areas where more expertise is required, um, as opposed to replacing personnel, which I believe is not a prudent way to discuss automation, whether it's an automated specimen processor or, or otherwise. Um, there are lots of areas in the laboratory that require judgment um, that, alas, Tarzan and Jane can't do, our robots in the, in the WASP. Um, we need to have people there thinking and caring about our patient care, um, and that is uh, in, in addition to whatever automation we bring in. Um, so it's certainly the case that we were able to present that to leadership in that context, and that was very important, um, both for um, uh, staff morale, but also because it's prudent to make sure that you're honest with leadership. Yeah, the return of investment for all of this, if you look at the actual finances in terms of uh, ultimately return of investment for us, it's within a two to three year period, we clearly have already received the return of our investment and then are gaining the efficiencies gained by having a more productive lab with uh, able to tolerate and cope with the increasing demands for increased numbers of tests each year without having to increase our workforce. And if anything, being able to, in fact, reduce our workforce, fortunately for us, it's through attrition. So in terms of morale of the lab, it's being maintained. Um, but all the bonuses, we're getting increased quality and we're also getting reduced uh, reduction in our turnaround times. So it's a it's a win-win no matter how you look at it. And it's clearly um, the way that microbiology is going. It's, it's a paradigm shift. And um, for those labs that haven't yet jumped on board, I'm sure you certainly will in the, in the very near future. In microbiology, we've launched a, a very, um, ourselves on a journey uh, I would say with bringing automation and cutting edge technology uh, to the forefront. That journey actually started many months ago in a, in a very uh, important partnership that we have with Copan uh, to bring automation for the first time to microbiology, a, a field that's been historically driven by uh, just pure manual process. and. Uh, some very time-consuming and extended growth. We started that journey, uh, oh gosh, I would say back uh, almost six months ago with the implementation of a product called WASP, uh, which really was a tool to help with just the processing of all the volume that we, we see each and every day. For the most part, we've had, um, I would say we have no one who can't use it, but we do have some people that are more skilled than others, and they became our super users and our trainers. And so overall, it's been a good experience. I have to tell you, it's worked out better than I thought it would. Uh, I was concerned initially uh, that people wouldn't buy into it or want to watch it or deal with it as much as they are. And really, it's been a very, very positive experience. You know, there are always going to be people who, ha who have a negative about something that are never open to change. And I was probably one of those people at one time, too. Do you know? But... I don't know, for some reason I opened my mind to this. Do you know what I mean? Because I thought it was incredible what it could do. And I think if you look at it in that sense, do you know what I mean? So that when you come over here, it's like, okay, so I fill the silo, I fill this up with plates, and I come over here. And I mean, anything you want to know about this, when it alarms, it tells you right on the computer. You don't need to have a huge brain to run this machine. Did I ever hope that we see something like this? No. <laughs> But it has saved us a bunch of time, um, especially in our off shifts. Um, they're not as stressed in the morning when we come in. So before it would be like having a whole tray of urines lined up for them to streak. And now we see them here um, when we come in in the morning and they're just talking and very relaxed as opposed to like <gasps> stressed out. So we have two WASP machines and uh, Monday through Friday, they're both operating. On the weekends, we usually will shut one down. Um, and before that, we would have had several bench technologists doing this work. We haven't completely eliminated those positions. They're doing other work now, but it's, um, it's really um, sped up 
the, the whole process and freed those technicians, technologists to do other things. Once you push the ready button, then you get into your containers. There's only three containers you need to choose from. You know what I mean? You don't need to start hitting all the pretty colors. <laughs> and then you just push OK, and it's going to go by itself. You can walk away. You don't need to come back to it. I don't like when people stand in front of it and stare at it, OK? Because it's supposed to be a walk away specimen processor. And I really find that Jane does not like to be stared at. If you stand in front of her and you stare at her, she is going to perform for you. So I always say, get away from the machine. Walk away. So I've been in this position in this, uh, in this area for the last two months. And uh, I was trained on the, uh, the WASP. I've had hands on for like two or three days with someone else. And then we do have a, um, a binder that gives us um, line by line ways of how to do the maintenance every day. It'll tell you first thing, you know, turn on the machine and then go, on, go from there. So it is easy to follow. Um, so I'd say after about uh, a, a week on the machine, I felt comfortable using it. When we first got the WASP, we were only putting urines on it. Now we have graduated. We, after the urines, we brought in the sterile body fluids. After the sterile body fluids, we went to bronchial specimens. After the bronchial specimens, we went to wound specimens, the e-swab. And now we're also putting the uh, MRSA swabs on it because they come in e-swabs now we're in. We just transitioned from Remel swab to e-swab. So that's why we're able to do this. So, I mean, it's taken three years, but we've come there and we've reached our goal. Now we're putting everything on it. We initially just started off with the plating of urines and doing swabs because we wanted everyone to feel comfortable with the system and we needed to feel comfortable that the WASP was operational in our hands. After the first two to three weeks, we then moved into more complex specimens that required not only plates but broth tubes as well for plating and also the preparation of gram stains. I think we have such a gifted and talented crew uh, here that we're able to validate pretty much most sample types with the exception of um, stool and um, sputum. Um, and it works well um, with our current volume. We process about 600 samples a day. and It's been great. Um, we've been using the gram slide prep module for uh, wounds and fluids that require gram stain. So what it does is it will automatically do the smear for you. Um, it labels it with the barcode, the accession number, and the patient name. Um, the barcode helps, especially when we're resulting uh, the gram stain, so we don't have to manually type in the numbers. Um, the quality of the smear, it's more uh, precise. It gives you a good thin layer of smear, you know, not too thick, not too thin. It's more consistent than when you're doing it manually or by hand. For abscess cultures, fluid cultures, um, we do broths, um, and the WASP does it for us, including the labeling part. So we spend about 15 to 20 minutes uh, on, the, on the daily maintenance, um, replacing the pads, wiping, uh, wiping the surface with, with alcohol, make sure that it's clean. The vast majority of maintenance is wipe, wipe, wipe. When people come to look at it and, you know, that's the first, I mean, usually the fr whoever's going to be touching the wasp will always be the first one to say, is there a lot of maintenance? No. The maintenance would be this sheet, which isn't like, I mean, I, I don't know, there's probably 30 things here. And you look at it and you're overwhelmed by it. Oh my God, I got to have to do that. Tops, it's 15 minutes. In the beginning, when we were first, you know, when the machine first arrived, it was like, you know, you feel a little nervous about it. Like, okay, okay, you know, it was probably a half hour, but... It's down to like, you know, 15 minutes, if that. One of the questions uh, that was quite important for me was how uh, good was the tech support? Because there's so many robotic parts involved in this instrument. And so we wanted to know how fast the response time is going to be. It's been good. Uh, I, I can say that, you know, every time we call, they, they usually call back within a few minutes. So, and, and most of our problems uh, are usually easily resolved uh, remotely. It's a great machine. I love the machine. I've loved it since the day I've seen, I saw it. When I found out I was getting it, it made it even better. Does it have its problems? Yeah, it does. Do you know what I mean? One thing I would 
never do is put somebody on this machine, I'll let them use this machine that was not open to change and that did not like the machine for fear that it was gonna take their job. Because then you just run into problems. That's my experience of it. You know, I see that even with the people that I work with, there's a lot of people that fear the machine. They kind of like standoffish. If something goes wrong, it's like, oh, dude, you gotta call Copian. Do you know what I mean? The customer service is excellent. <laughs> Copan WASP certainly met our need for throughput and media flexibility and capability. For scalability, we needed to be able to grow into our instrument, and the Copan WASP afforded us the ability to do so by accommodating a variety of specimen types and containers, and also we were able to grow into its potential add-on features, including the automated gram stain module which we acquired. The uh, Copan WASP certainly has met our needs very well on all of those fronts. We have been able to grow into the instrument. We've been WASP users since uh, January 2013. It saved a whole tech on one of our shifts. We love it. It does all the work for us. Well, whenever somebody comes through here, I'm always honest about how I feel about the WASP. You know, I tell them I love them. I tell them it's my baby. You know, I wouldn't trade it in for anything, but you need to be open-minded. I, I like it. Once you know it, like I said, it's easy to use. Developing WASP as an open platform for front-end specimen processing was the first challenge that Copan tackled. Once that job was done, the highway for full laboratory automation was opened. WASP Lab was a natural progression in the vision of automation. Copan's philosophy for automation is to create open solutions that are modular and scalable. Copan wants to deliver to you solutions that mimic what you do in your lab, but to help you work more efficiently. The total lab automation and digital microbiology movement that started in Europe is transforming laboratories and medicine in North America. I'm Marcel Groenewegen. I'm the, the lab director at the SHL Group uh, in the Netherlands. The automation of uh, the microbiology is from our point of view uh, very logic. Uh, as we try to automate everything, uh, we looked uh, the, the past period to the different suppliers uh, which, which provide solutions for automating uh, microbiology. Uh, I visit uh, the, the different plants where they uh, uh, manufacture the machines. Uh, uh, to compare the different suppliers with it because it has to match with your philosophy you have at your laboratory. Uh, in our case, um, we ended uh, up very uh, happily with COPAN. The, the philosophy of uh, uh, how COPAN approaches the laboratory and automation matched with our uh, philosophy. You have a sample, what are the basic handlings you do on the sample and how can you do it uh, at a, a small space as possible because uh, we all know that the square meters uh, in a laboratory are limited. Uh, and I think the WASP already had that within the machine, doing a lot of handling in maybe two and a half square meters. If you want to have uh, a standard uh, quality and you want to continue your process uh, also when uh, people have a break, you also want to automate that. And from that point of view, we looked, what can you do next to plating? You want the interpretation of the, uh, the plates, you want uh, the incubation uh, of the plates uh, automatic, uh, and you want uh, strict time frames within you in which you can do the handling. And what's getting more and more important, you want to do it uh, also out outside the location where you are. I first saw automation when I was at ECMID in, in Europe, in uh, Milan in 2010. And uh, I was looking at the competitor's product at that time. And uh, I wasn't so much focused on the actual equipment, but I was focused more on the concept of automation and what it would provide. And so we went into the discussions on automation, how it would help the laboratory. And uh, we looked at the features of, of turnaround time. We looked at the features of, of complete tracking through the entire system from start to finish. Uh, we loved the concept of the workload dashboard um, which actually then in real time gives you what's ready to go. We had to have meetings amongst the, the hospital executive to discuss this, to look at the downstream effects of, of automation in terms of improving turnaround time. We started looking at automation in 2012. 
Uh, we knew that we were going to have to move to some sort of uh, automation for our front end um, to help expedite the processing of the samples and to um, uh, standardize the workflow, standardize the streaking and the plating. We didn't exactly know which way we were going to go with the processor. And we went to ASM and I'd heard some buzz about the total lab automation for microbiology. And that was very attractive to us. And we thought, when we go to ASM, let's take a really hard look and start investigating. And we looked at all of the different vendors that are out there. Um, and we really uh, kept an open mind about all of them. And when we got back to Lexington, Kentucky, after the conference, we actually started a, a sort of a spreadsheet to say, okay, well, what are we really looking for? What do we really need? And um, aside from the beauty of all of the systems and the bells and the whistles, what it really came down to was finding the system that most closely represented a real med tech and one that didn't use uh, consumables. We wanted to minimize the impact to the cost of a culture. And so when we started looking, you know, Copan sort of rose to the top uh, as well as one of your competitors. And um, then we started looking at the digital imaging because we were going to go for the entire enchilada. We weren't just going to go for the processor. It was going to be all or nothing for us. Part of the the choice of, of system was governed by our particular needs at that particular time. It was based on, on not just the business case, but we have space limitations in the laboratory, and so we had to get a system that would fit the space that we had. So we also had engineering look at our floor space and our, the floor's weight holding capacity, so that was another factor that we had to take into account so that uh, if we'd had to shore up the floor, uh, which we needed to with the one system, according to the engineers, we would have had some difficulty with that and there was an additional expense associated with that. We also looked at, at um, taking the tracking right to the bench. Um, and while I was in Europe, we visited quite a number of sites that had the automation. Um, I didn't see it as an advantage. So the question was asked, will Wasp Lab do what the other automation systems will do? And we said, yes, it will. So our lab, um, we have a large open reading area, and then the, there's a separate room where the samples are processed. They're adjacent to each other. The room is not that big. I mean, I think it's pretty average for a microbiology laboratory. We're going to be replacing our workstations with the Wasp Lab uh, digital workstation. And we're all excited about that because they're ergonomic and, you know, you push the button and they go up and they go down. So everybody's all excited about that. And we're excited about the big monitors and, and you know, being able to see the colonies as big as a football, you know. So that's all very exciting. We originally had wanted to bring the track into the workbenches. So I asked my staff, I said, you know, we, we have this great opportunity to have this track and it's going to come out through the wall and it, it can come into your workbench and, you know, you can put your plate on there and it'll take it back or you can call for the plate and it'll deliver it to you. What do you think? And they were like, mm, not so much. They said, we really want to get up and move around. We don't want to, you know, have to sit in this chair all day long. And it, you know, when we started thinking about it, uh, it really cut the room off in half and you would have to walk around the track to get to the other side. So, you know, when we really thought about it, we had the opportunity to do it and we could have done it, but in our situation, in our laboratory, it really didn't work out very well. So we're going with the canister system and everybody's very happy about that because they're gonna be pre-sorted and it's just steps from where the workbenches are, so. The way that I look at wasp lab is it ends at the canisters. And then it, it's, again, it's sort of like what we currently do. Um, so when the finished plates are loaded up in the canisters, they go to the bench. Uh, we're very excited at this point because we've now watched, launched into phase two of our journey, which is WASP Lab. And that brings all the elements of automation that um, we've been coming uh, so accustomed to in many of the other uh, lab areas like chemistry and immunochemistry, for the first time we can now uh, connect our 
processing units, WASP with WASP Lab, which brings in a, a sense of conveyor belts and, and automatic incubation with con uh, almost continual monitoring of plates, uh, digital imaging that allows our, our technologists to uh, now for the first time instead of looking at plates each and every day, they look at images on a screen. We can track all the decisions that they make in terms of selection of colonies for identification. We can automatically, without having to manipulate those plates and expose our, our employees uh, to bacteria and kind of those disease things, to do that on a computer screen. Now, I commonly joke that sometimes we'll let our microbiologists work in their pajamas at home. I don't know that we're going to quite go that far, but really this technology and, this, and what it brings to us in the laboratory is just really an incredible story. And, you know, we're very uh, thankful for our Copan friends to develop that technology uh, and enable Elverno to be one of the first to have access to it. From, from an implementation standpoint, our recommendation uh, was to do this in phases, and that's the way we did it here. Uh, we actually implemented the WASP uh, system first uh, and get the, let the staff have time to get used to that. The second phase of our total automation project was the MALDI. The third phase then was the uh, WASP lab robotic incubators. It was easy to do these different phases because they are modular systems. It, it was easy to connect the track to our standalone WASP units um, at a later time and implement in phases like that. I think one of the other nice things that Copan is doing is there's other pieces of technology too. They have their multi-tracer units um, that um, we're looking forward to using to help us with um, spotting uh, for the multi and keeping track of the patient identification and, and just making it an easy workflow for the staff as well. So we see that Copan uh, is looking at all of microbiology technology, not just how their units and how this can adapt to other pieces in there and look at a total solution for microbiology. Of what we have is 70,000 urine per year. We have 50,000 MRSC per year and 25,000 uh, VRE per year. So this is 86% of all our specimen that we put in the WASP lab. I think that for that, for that kind of system, I think that all this, all specimens that are simple and very fast to, to process and they are high volume should put in, put in the WASP lab. For specimens that is more complex, I think that more complex mean people should do that. If you put some stool, if you put some wound, there is many plate to, to, to there is many particular protocol, there is, it, it is not as much easy than a, than a urine or MRC that is a straight pattern. So I think that that kind of specimen, it is more difficult to put because for all your system, if you put that kind of, of that kind of specimen, it is would probably make the system slower, and this is this is more difficult, and that's why we decide to just focus and begins with that with that kind of system with that kind of specimen. So high volume and mostly negative, because negative plates are very easy to process with that kind of system. You just have to confirm that it's negative. <laughs> I saw the, the video on the Quebec installation and like it was in fast time and, and uh, it was the same. I mean, they brought it in, they set it up. Um, we had to do some prep work in terms of locating the, the jiffy poles for the, the power and, and the um, data, data line. But um, it, it, it went very smoothly, you know, the setup. So uh, here we have WASP-2. WASP-2 is designated to work on uh, our nosocomial surveillance specimens, so VRE, MRSA, uh, serratia, multidrug resistant pseudo uh, urines and feces samples. It's connected to the WASP lab system. Uh, moving on over to WASP number one with the gram stain module. Uh, that processor will handle all protocols and specimens requiring a gram stain and possibly um, take on some of the workload from WASP tube if it gets too heavy. That WASP is also attached to the track system and the two meet at a, at a 90 degree angle and then the track continues on to our first incubator number one which is a CO2 incubator. It will has the capacity of 870 plates. The next incubator is incubator 2, which is an O2 incubator, and that has a capacity of uh, 1,700 plates. And then the next uh, incubator attached to the track is number 3, which also is O2 atmospheric conditions. And at the end of this, the track system is our canisters, uh, which get designated during the reading cycle of the specimen processing.
So in the middle of our WASP lab system in our lab, we have four benches. Right now, our current thought is we're going to have our screening technologists and our reading technologists situated at these four benches. Next to the four benches is the manual interactive bench where we can actually manually manipulate samples and place them back onto the system if appropriate. So our, our first process will be to screen our samples using the WASP lab system and then send those plates over to be read by the reading technologists. They will then designate plates to go into certain stackers, uh, nosocomial stackers, final positive stackers, partial positive stackers, and further investigation stackers. The plates then will be taken by the technologists working on those benches, and then uh, specimens worked up at their benches uh, in behind the system. I, I think that LIS interface interfacing is one thing that's incredibly important, and it is the most important conduit but ultimately, at the end of the day, we want to be much more like the radiologists in large part, where today I can log into my healthcare information system. I can select an individual patient. Not only can I view their lab results, or results but I can also click on an image. The radiology image will pop up on my computer screen regardless of where I am in the world, and it allows me to review their imaging. Wouldn't it be great for pathology as a whole, but also for microbiology, to be able to click on a patient's culture, and not only see the interpretation of the gram stain, but also to actually see that gram stain altogether. So I think we need to have a quantum leap, if you will, in our computing technology to allow us not only the ability to capture those images, but to transmit those images to our healthcare information systems. And I think that's gonna take in large part partnership between laboratories, manufacturers and the LIS vendors. I look forward to, um, uh, as is now coming out in the literature um, and the professional journals, I look forward to the sort of full automation for the microbiology laboratory. We've all heard about it, we're looking forward to it. I have to say that a dream of mine would be to see, in some way, shape, or form, a somewhat agnostic version of that, where one could connect multiple platforms, regardless of whose they are, to provide the best um, available connectivity for, for those of us who can't switch out all our instrumentation into one flavor in order to create the instrument interfaces that we need. I think a foreign interface exchange or some sort of agnostic um, uh, capability or accommodation for that would be a lovely thing. I think it doesn't matter what type of uh, LIS system you have, it's, if it's a commercial or a, a home build. What is very important that you really get the IT guys from the, the different companies together in one room. You have seen it that they try to do it from distance, emailing, phone calls. We have experience from the past that's not successful. So what we did, we got the Copan IT guys for two days. Uh, we did it with our uh, LIS programmer and our own application people and our project leader. They sat together and after two days it was working. One of the things that we've uh, enjoyed so far in partnering with Copan uh, has just been the responsiveness uh, to uh, new things that we want. Uh, you know, we're, we're one of the first um, are actually the first in the U.S., but uh, one of the first installs. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at building this along with them and um, adapting it to uh, our needs and our LIS systems and our operation here. And so far, Copan's done a very nice job as we've made requests uh, and changes or things that we need. It's been amazing on how fast they've responded to that and actually made those changes. And uh, a lot of times we don't see that on the IT side. Uh, it's more time consuming, but Copan's done a really nice job to be a quick responder, and we've been able to implement changes very quickly. Copan not only is committed to meeting our needs today, but they're committed to providing what we need in the future. And we felt very, very comfortable with the level of service and the quality of the instrument. And the front end processor, the WASP, has a proven track record here in the United States, and that was very, very important to us. We knew that the digital imaging is a new and emerging system. So we wanted to um, hitch ourselves, if you will, to a company that was committed to growing and that we felt um, you know, was going to have our best interest. We didn't want a company that was gonna say, here's the box, this is the way it is, make it work, you know, you're gonna have to adjust your workflow to meet our uh, system. Copan was just the opposite. It was, okay, do you want uh, a bi-directional track? 
Do you want it to come out to the benches? If you do, that's fine. If you don't, we can make it work either way. And that was great. That was very refreshing for me to choose. Yeah, uh, as I get older, my eyes aren't as, as healthy as they used to be. And uh, some of the images that I've seen have, again, they've wowed me to the point where um, it's almost like having a, a plate right in front of your face at a, a, a huge magnification. And um, what I like to do is some of the people that I recognize as being a little bit hesitant with all these changes because they're a little nervous, I bring them over and I say, hey, you're on the stool bench today examining stools with the current process. Come and look at what I've done here. So I've actually shown them stools that they set up and are looking at now in the current process. And I went in behind and I set them up on WASP lab. I said, what do you think? She goes, wow. I said, did you see this on your uh, regular plates? And I've caught a couple of colonies and a couple of things that were missed on the regular uh, uh, eye seeing uh, current process where the WASP lab picked it up, the imaging system. So I'm very impressed with that. There are people that are sort of hesitant um, and I understand because, you know, if, you know, we're, we're looking at the entire system, not just the processor. And so they're, the only hesitation is, you know, they, they're like, oh, well, you're taking the art out of microbiology because you're not looking at the plate anymore. You're looking at an image. But once they understood that um, the image is going to help us with aging eyes like myself, <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be able to call for the plate and look at the plate any time that we want. It sort of dispels those fears. For, for the images, it is beautiful, and people are just... At the beginning, they were, okay, so uh, I'm not sure, but after something like one week, they are... I think that they can see more, more colony with, with the picture by itself, because you can zoom, you can... Um, it is more easy because actually when you have plates with manual with your only your eyes it is more difficult for colony you cannot see if there is a small colony that is growing just just close from another colony and the picture is is very good actually microbiology has not changed for generations. This is the first real change in how microbiology labs are run, and it's an incredibly exciting time. I mean, this is literally the beginning of a paradigm shift in how microbiology labs are moving in the future. Um, I feel fortunate to be able to be part of this change as it's happening. Uh, not only is it changing how we run things, but it's changing how our users see the lab. And to be able to share digital microbiology in terms of actually providing that on reports or be able to show it on request uh, when there are interesting cases um, or with our colleagues who are in pathology asking for correlation with what they're seeing on pathology um, is another bonus and, and uh, potential for this technology. We're not there yet because we haven't moved to digital microbiology just yet, but we're hoping to certainly do that in the very near future. In this day and age of, of best practices, laboratory medicine best practices, there are a number of initiatives that are being um, sponsored by the CDC and ASM for best practice medicine and evidence-based medicine. I think the incorporation of automated uh, platforms and protocols and the middleware and the software that goes into that and collects the data um, will enable us to actually create metrics for standardization and protocols because we'll have the data um, more easily available to us um, from the IT component of these platforms um, to be able to look at the data and create the appropriate standardization that will optimize our patient care, which of course is what it's all about. Uh, and so we're really very excited about what this can potentially bring uh, to the laboratory uh, and, and kind of our, our focus and our values and why we're here. You know, we view the ability to provide care to patients as a privilege. And so we need to search and find every single technology that enables us to do that better. And uh, we think that uh, what we're doing with Copan and microbiology automation will do just that. You can't deliver a product anymore which takes three days if the possibilities are to do, there, uh, to do it in one day. And I think as, a, as a, uh, a company, or in this case as, as a laboratory, we continue aiming to, to be a front runner in new technology. Uh, always from the aim in serving the, the, the patient to get as soon as possible the right answers to the uh, physician uh, to make the right uh, diagnosis to the patient because that's I think the basis of all a medical labs that is uh, to serve the patient as good and as fast as possible. Yeah, it, it, actually it, it introduces the change. You need to change. If you don't buy that kind of system it is difficult to just say to people okay so we have to change the lab. 
We have to change the way that we are that we are working actually. And I think that we are doing that not for the wasp lab, we are doing that for the passion. And it is actually for the passion. Because results are, are available a week, a week before, a, many, many, many hours before than in the old system, in the old organization. We're trying to take what the laboratory is doing and we're trying to make it clinically relevant. At the end of the day, that's what all laboratories are going to be judged based upon. What value do we ultimately deliver to the patient whose care that we're managing? Can we get information back in a timely manner? Can we get it back when it's still actionable? And that's really going to be the most critical step that's going to be required. So why do we make all this happen? Because COPAN is committed to innovation in microbiology that will improve patient care. The WASP and WASP Lab project would not be possible without the ingenuity, determination, and hard work from COPAN's team of engineers and developers.